Greetings, Warlords. Raj here. Welcome to Saga Thursday, the show all about the skirmish miniatures game from Studio Tomahawk. Joined for another monthly episode by Monty. Monty, how's it going, man? It is going so well, Raj. How about yourself? Things are going pretty good here. Slowly re recovering my mojo for, for Saga. Lots going on here. Today we're going to talk about a couple different things, as we always do in these delicious Monty episodes. We're going to talk about the thought process behind building a war band. And I was looking at our conversation here, and I don't think it came across, but this is Monty's thought process uh -oh. uh, specifically. I mean, I'm going to chime in, obviously, with my own thoughts here, but uh, we're delving into the man's mind here today. <laughs> and then we got the paint contest wrap up we've got a lot of great entries that was a uh, monster sized type creations and then we've got we're going to check in with our kind of saga thursday patreon sponsors a lot of new models coming out we're going to do the giveaways for the patrons and then before we even get to that stuff monty there is a whole boatload of saga news to address I hope you went potty, buddy. We're going to be locked, <laughs> glued to these chairs for the next yep. two and a half hours or uh, whatever it's going to be here. So, Okay. Well, jumping in here, I just want to give a mention to the guys over in Portugal. They got their Grand Melee in Lisbon coming up on June 1st and 2nd. So there still should be time to jump in and get in on that. I believe... Uh, can't remember now, but I believe it's in a museum of wow. some kind or oh, nice. a very cool venue like that, giving the Polish guys a run for their money as far as venue goes. Um, I believe it's a museum. I can't quite remember. Apologies, guys, but it's really cool. Um, check that out. Moving on to another event. Monty, I can speak a little bit more about this one. All Father's Day 2024, June 15th. Age of Magic, subtitle, King of Monsters. We are doing a team tournament with random partners, all right? So rules and junk will all be listed below in the Discord, but you're going to show up with your Age of Magic force. You're going to be paired up with a partner, and you guys are going to do your best to defeat the enemy. And there'll be team objectives and individual objectives along the way and there's kind of a monster theme there so you have to build a monster you don't have to use it in rounds one and two but you will have to use it in round three for the tag team battle royale <laughs> center money did you look at the the packet there the scenarios uh i don't think i've seen it yet no what are you doing you're killing me here I mean, what am i doing uh, are you interested in this? What's, I, what's going I, on with you? I won't be able to make the uh, All Fathers event, Boy. even though people would say that uh, I am indeed a monster. You are a monster, Monty. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, this one will be extra special this year. We're doing it at a local park with crazy rapids and rocks and dolls and trails you can climb on. It's in a pavilion under... It's under the sky, but you're also under the roof of the pavilion. It's a shelter. It's got electric kitchen, stuff like that. We're all going to bring food. We're going to share. And then it's a campground as well, Monty. Nice. And we're going to be camping out late night saga around the fire. <laughs> Set up the board over the fire. Get going. <laughs> I'll slowly melt. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully get a good turnout for that one. There is another tournament, Adepticon 2025, moving to Milwaukee, Monty. Oh, yeah, big news. What do you think of that? Uh, I have just one small thought. I'm excited about it, right? Change is good. Um, and they clearly had outgrown their space. Like I know some people are grousing a little bit, but honestly, they, they had blown the doors out. Um, they just, I, I wasn't there and I was hearing from people like who tried to do open play and went into the big building and like just no room, no chance. So change was coming. The only small thought the only small thing that we, we were really spoiled by, and I don't know if it will exist in the next Adepticon, is we had our own Saga Hall, which has always been pretty amazing. And 
don't know yeah, if that's true anymore. I, I have no clue how that's going to work out for for this one. Um, yeah, and I think <laughs> we're kind of talking about the Saga Hall after the event and stuff. I mean, that original Saga Hall was pretty pretty amazing. Uh, the one at the West End was fine. Yeah. There was pillars. The doors wouldn't stay open without an Arctic breeze <laughs> coming in. The ambiance wasn't great. The ceilings were low. It was really that original Saga yeah, Hall that yeah. was so great. Um, just a great vibe. Definitely an awesome situation. No clue if we'll be able to recreate that or if we'll be thrown in the, with the, the masses. Either way, it's fine. You know, yeah. getting more exposure and the tables and, and gameplay is good. Uh, looks like there's one attached hotel with maybe 50% more capacity than Renaissance Schaumburg. Nice. Hopefully there's more than 50% of uh, elevators. elevators. <laughs> that's uh, that's my main concern. Um, hopefully there's enough elevators for everybody. Six at Renaissance really wasn't enough. So hopefully there's eight, nine, twelve, or something yep. double banks to get everybody out and over to the event on time. I I got to be attached to the venue. I cannot drive it. <laughs> so right. um, that that that's my thing there. I know people like Airbnb in it, driving in and stuff, but not me. I got to be able to just walk right to. 100% with you, Raj. Um, the year before, there was a sl slight mix-up, and I had to schlep between the two hotels. And, uh, yeah, it is much, much better if you can be on site and roll up, um, walk to your games. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, so, yeah, just so folks are aware, get your, your stuff booked there. Um, on Money, we're coming up on the... Second Warband Building Challenge. This is for Saga Thursday patrons. So I want to give everybody a heads up. It's starting in June. So this is going to be, I'll do another heads up video, uh, you know, the first week of June. But, you know, by then it'll, it'll be started. So this is one point per month going through December. So that's actually seven months, but uh, you know, one of them will be a warlord. And if you're doing Age of Magic, you know, you have to squeeze in an extra point or two somewhere along the way. So I will say, Monty, I am doing Age of Magic. Ooh. I am building a warband specifically for the new Age of Magic book that I'm working on. And the idea is it's going to be in... <laughs> it's going to be painted specifically for the book for a two-page spread. So yes, wow. if you're a patron, you can follow wow. along with that and see what I'm building. I'll be following. Uh, yeah, so that sounds good. Or will you be? Amani, you couldn't, couldn't cut it last year. No, I got... Cut the mustard. Not I, built for you. I, it's not out of the question. I would like to try again. I would like to try again. Last year, something happened. I started. I was going to do it, and I got so excited, I overpainted so i ruined it <laughs> not that, well, yeah i don't uh, i would say you probably improved upon the concept <laughs> by finishing it all in a single month we kind of had people talking about various challenges of doing a warband in a month right uh, maybe we will at, at some point we'll replace this but i think that it, that is a unique challenge it's definitely yeah. doable you know i did it last month before akon my age of magic chaos wars i did most within like three and a half four weeks so nice. that will be a challenge i'd like to do at, at some point but not not today money <laughs> um the age of crusades fact money is creeping closer Ooh. oh yeah we're looking at a screenshot somebody posted oh. on the discord uh they were playing it in france Wow. In a, an event. And so somebody posted, a, it's a little blurry of the Teutonic, the Ordenstadt board. Oh. And it looks like combat bonus has been pasted over with something. Okay. So these are fairly hefty changes in the works. Um, sometimes they send them to, to me and we, we talk about them, share them. But uh, I haven't seen anything yet on this. No. So um, Nothing. Nothing yeah, here. Very... Very interesting. What do you what do you think about that, Monty? Is that I'm super excited. Um, and no way is this uh, tamping down on that excitement. But my 
personal matatawea. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm like a little nervous, little beats of sweat. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. finally, I think I cracked the code on how to properly play them and then the board will be different. So I'll have to crack a second code. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if what, what they're up to as far as, you know, there's a few factions that are, you definitely need attention like yes. Lord and Stott. Yep. Yeah, you know, the mutts are kind of, borderline you know people take them sometimes they do well you know just the nature of their their board and the trades and stuff make it a, a challenging war band you know sure you know getting helped in some way you know would be nice but you you don't know you know are they gonna take it away oh please something no. <laughs> <laughs> on the um, chopping block they go <laughs> yeah and then there's some really tough contenders byzantines yeah. pagan peoples yeah. Um, probably the more yeah, probably outrageous candidates that could use a little yeah. tweak or something in their play style to, to make them a little more fair. But mm -hmm. who knows? Hopefully we get to see this sooner than later. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it coincided with the release of Age of Chivalry. So the last time we talked with Alex, there was supposed to be, you know, those ages were supposed to be able to play against each other. You know, nicely right. in a way so I wouldn't be surprised if some of the playtesting was ah. crusade stuff new these new changes how do they stack against okay. the chivalry wow. stuff wow yeah um, that's oh, I a like theory that. I don't I don't remember that. it's a good theory I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna or, second it one way or another so potentially later this summer hopefully who knows who knows yeah who knows okay uh, one last bit of item here and that is uh new friend of the show best the arm games they do uh, they're a stl creator manufacturer they do a lot of different miniatures they have a tormentor cults kickstarter it's going on right now as of this being posted there'll be a uh, i think probably two weeks left now i'm giving these guys a shout out because i am using their models for the age of magic army i will be building yeah. So um, they've agreed. Yeah, I kind of had a discussion with them. They've agreed to let me use pictures of the models in the new book. So that is something I wanted to give a shout out to. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll chat them up, see if we can get some free stuff for, for the patrons or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But that's the last bit of news there, I think. I'm going to click this button, see if there's any more news. Nope. We're on to the main <laughs> topic so nice mr monty i don't not sure what the title of this video will be in the end that's that's bad youtube work that should be the first thing <laughs> title and thumbnail before you even make the video is the rule of thumb if you're a youtuber but on the screen here i've got building a warband thought process so we're going to follow along with monty and i don't know if you're going to use one example or multiples but we're going to see how you think about building a war band, um, different aspects of it, and then maybe folks will find that handy for themselves when they are thinking about building a war band, you know, either from a, a newbie perspective or, you know, if this is the fourth, fifth, sixth war band. So, Monty, um, what, do you, what gets you to build a new war band? Ooh. Um, yeah, Are you coming from like a model perspective or rules or what what is usually the case for you? Right. Um, so when you um, very lightly pitched this to me, I was like super excited. But then as I was starting to kind of like do a little bit of prep this morning uh, before I call, <laughs> I thought, which version do I pick? Because I am a little bit like a butterfly. I do have different approaches. Um, one very real approach for me is um, especially like in the last few years, more and more, I kind of fall in love with certain figures or lines, and I just look at the models. I'm like, oh, these would be so nice. Um, so th I think that's a valid approach. Like if if you have seen miniatures or uh, they've been featured somewhere, maybe your buddy used them or someone gave a shout out, 
Like, um, for example, when I painted my Iberians, I had always loved the Crusader Iberian minis. And at some point I just said, you know what? I want to paint them. I had painted Iberians in 15 millimeters. So I had a paint scheme in mind. So I bought them, grabbed them and just really had fun with that. Um, sometimes I'll come at it uh, with a slightly different approach. Uh, for example, most recently, um, I knew I had no completed Age of Crusades warband. I had sold off all my stuff and uh, Fimble Winter was coming up, so I needed to jump in. So I started I started actually painting some beautiful figures um, for a Crusader, uh, um, Crusader warband. I was going to do the Knights of St. Lazarus's. But then I also was looking at the mutts and I was playing them online and I was, I kind of like came up with like a, I came up with a different play style. I felt like I cracked the code. So all of a sudden I switched horses and I remembered, I love the artisan design. Um, I think that's it. Artisan design miniatures. And so I put in a big order. I got yeah. them and they're just gorgeous. They Those were so, great. yeah, they're yeah. so big and they're chunky and the folds are nice. And I use this like hyper highlighting technique. So as soon as I did like a little test set, the poor crusaders, uh, Knights of St. Lazarus, as good as they looked, they kind of got the boot and I, I jumped horses onto doing, uh, the mutts. So in that case, I love the models, but I also wanted to run mutts. And so the combo was the driver for me throwing in for that project. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of similar about, I guess, you know, typically, you know, it's the models, making sure I have a warband for each age is kind of a big driver for me. I'm not super speedy in the warband construction area, one or maybe two, two a year is, is really good for me. Um, so just making sure I have a warband for each, each of the ages. That was the main instigator for Carthage. Um, the history for, for Carthage for me drew me in, you know, kind of the, the underdog, the Hannibal story is kind of what drew me to those guys more than the models. I think the Victrix models are fine, but, um, it was more of the, the history that kind of drew me to those ones. And then on the flip side, you know, for age of magic, the chaos dwarves, I had those models, like I want to build a war band and it looks like uh, Masters of the Under Earth is the board to use. Is that my favorite? Yeah, I'll figure out a way to, to, to make it work. Um, so different, different ways of, of coming at it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Have you ever built specifically for the rules of a battle board, Auntie, where you thought, mm. I like this ability and this one so much and this, like I'm going to build this warband because I like these rules or yeah, you know, the, the saga ability so much. Right. I, um, I, th I think my answer is a yes. And I'm only hedging just a tiny bit because, you know, you and I had a joint project and, uh, and it was something that we didn't get to pull the curtain back on. And so it was like, we're going to do X. And X is some pretty juicy plays and combos between your yeah, world and Yeah, that was really mine. a rules. Yeah, yeah. And so the build was angle. the build was to maximize <laughs> maximize our chances of uh uh you know winning a uh, winning out. So yes, yes, I have a hundred percent looked at a board looked at the plays, tested it in Tabletop Simulator, said, yep, this is a good one, and then picked the models, right? I picked the models to reflect like the the S-tier build. And also um, in my hunt, I did one other thing. I went out and tried to find the very nicest, best models um, like to paint because painting, like if I'm painting good figures, that helps pull me into the project and pull me along through the slog. Sure. So that kind of moves on to the, the next part of the discussion here is actually picking out which models you want to use for your war band. So um, every month there's more and more selection <laughs> uh, than maybe there there used to be. You know, yep. you could go years without a new war band in first edition as far as, you know, the, the available model ranges. Um, we're definitely spoiled for, for choice more than ever here. So how do you, what are you looking for when you're trying to decide what, what models to use? Typically, there will be more than one option. 
for for most war bands. There's a, a couple out there, maybe maybe not. I don't know the. I think maybe Thracians. Yeah, exactly. One. I mean, the Indians were very underrepresented. Um, I, I you know initially, but I think it's been addressed. But there, there's a few war bands out there where you might. There's only one set of models to use, but um, what do you? Are you kind of the guy who goes to Victrix first and then source it out, or do you prefer metal? Um, I'm a I'm Would a metal three D prints. I'm, I'm a metal head metal, all the way. Metal head, all and, right. And a big I thought you were growing that. your hair out. Well, since, right. Since it, you yeah, it's going to keep here. growing now that you know, <laughs> now that I don't have to come into work. So uh, it'll keep growing. Uh, but yeah, I I am a metal head, and the easy answer to that one is um, because I flip almost well. Eventually, I flip everything that I paint. Um, metal, carefully packed, can go from here to wherever and be okay. Uh, Victrix, I just dread the thought of trying to ship Victrix with, say, <laughs> if I don't have metal spears. And um, 3D, I have to be very careful here, right? Um, 3D, there's some beautiful work being done. There's some great models. But it seems that casting your own figures is an art. And when we were at Fimble Winter, I don't know if you heard this discussion, there were a couple, three guys who had 3D printed um, armies. And they were just kind of like breaking in real time, like the legs were breaking oh, okay. off at the ankles, and 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 I would sure say, that's happened to, right. to me a little bit, right? And and even um, on another front, I had put in an order with a buddy who has one of the best and most expensive three D printers, and I got a bunch of World War II tanks. And you'd think tanks are super solid, and um, out of the box, he carefully wrapped them. Uh, gun barrels broke, tracks are broke, bits are broke, and it's like, holy Hannah, I, I can't resell stuff that can't go through the mail. So mm -hmm. so for me, unless it's like a figure or two, I kind of have to stay away from 3D. Um, if I'm going to do Victrix, I probably have to find a local sale to like not trash the spears and, and have an unhappy customer. So I am a metalhead. That, okay. And that's just me. I know there's lots of people who have grown up on the plastic side and they hate metal. So, yeah. You get choices. Yeah. Again, we're kind of spoiled for choice. Yes. Just for me, I don't have a strong attachment to the, the material. Probably whatever the most recent thing I did is the one that I don't want to do again. <laughs> so, I like it. Victrix plastic. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to do plastics. I did the, the, th the resin 3D printed for the Muslims. Now that I did those guys, I don't really want to do 3d prints again i mean the, the magic army that I'll, i'm going to be building soon will be but um i was also thinking about my my chivalry army so i have to get something representative of that age and i have a bunch of the perry plastics but i don't know just looking at them i don't know if it's because i worked on plastics recently but i actually i kind of thinking about going for metals for for chivalry and mixing it up so uh, I'm not um, loyal to, to any material. I guess it's obvious that aesthetically, you know, that, that's the most important thing for me and the models, you know, making sure that I like how they look. Um, how do you build a war band for an army you're just buying out? How do you, how do you decide what you're going to buy for that war band? Ooh. Um, very good question. So, um, as, as you know, um, some of the war bands are just dead simple. If you were going to say, let's say you go, um, I want to play and paint Saxons. Well, your equipment options are warriors on foot, half guard on foot, warlord on foot. And do you want to point a levy? And if you're running Saxons, probably not. So how easy is that? That's your choices, mm -hmm. right? But if you get into the mutts, you know, they've got hearth guard, they're on camel, they're on foot, they're on they're on horses. So for me, um, I do like lots of options. I like to um, be able to try different things. And as a painter, it's okay to paint like three versions of hearth guard. Um, I may not, like if I look at the board and I'm, I don't really have in faith in one of the options, I don't think it's a good option, maybe I won't buy it. But if I'm smart, I buy it all up front and even though my queue is pretty big, um, I'm not afraid to just like get get those options, load them up, and then um, you know one day take them out. 
because it's kind of fun to have like, you know, instead of a mono build to be able to trade pieces in and out and experiment. Sure. So you're not going to build exactly six points. Oh, God, no, uh, never. OK, you're going to buy maybe eight, nine, ten points worth of troops yeah. and kind of build them. I you know, you're not opposed to building and painting something that you might not necessarily use every time. Um, you know, you, you play big games, you might be doing um, team stuff, you, yep. know, you can loan out models. You know, yeah. So there's definitely value in painting additional stuff over a, a six points, even if you do kind of end up being locked into a, a specific six point list. Yeah, so I agree with that. I would say, and we haven't really kind of mentioned it yet, but I'm kind of committed to building more than usual because I'm trying to squeeze out additional war bands out of yep. one line of Good point of models. So I'm working on the you know recently painted Irish war band. So all those models are basically uh, applicable to to uh, a version of the Welsh, you know, foot foot slugger guys, but I'm going to need some hearth guard models to to add. So um, I would never use them for the Irish, but I can use them for, for the Welsh or something like that, you know, yeah. so kind of commit to painting additional models. And that's something that I, I guess when deciding on a war band, if it has a multi-use across uh, different factions, that's a little bit more enticing yes. to, to get it built. And some war bands are just it's going to be it. The Thracians, probably not the... Go back to those guys, but it's hard to squeeze out something compared to successors where you can run all kinds of different versions and depending on your models, you use them for different boards entirely. So awesome. Um, how do you decide on a paint scheme, Monty? Ooh, You've got the models. Yeah. How are you going to paint them? That's and a that's what, what methods? You know, there's colors and then methods right. that are kind of entwined, but right. No, that's very separate. good. You're you're more of the artist, so I'll let you cover that probably in a little more detail. But first of all, um, something that I've done from way back is I do have little folders, and uh, gosh, this is is this embarrassing to admit? I think I even have a Pinterest account. And uh, yeah, oh, nice. I let it, I let it go cold for a while, and then I was like, you know, okay, it's not just for you know quilting or whatever. So mm -hmm. right, so I started like just like I can either on my desktop or in Pinterest just like save pictures of something that like the color scheme is eye catching, the style is eye catching. Um, maybe it's something I haven't thought of, and I just I kind of get out there and I profile. And so sometimes it would be a search. Uh, use the use the keyword search, say, in the Saga Facebook group and look at other people's stuff. Um, in the days of blogging, I followed people. I do the same thing. I'd look at their work and go, ooh, that's a good idea. Um, Twitter, a little less active there, but I used to do the same thing. Anywhere that gives me a feed on, on people's good work and good painting. And uh, if a color scheme is good here, um, often you could just like import it to something else. So I kind of try to get a folder and a profile and an idea. And then when I get the figures, like I usually am not starting from scratch. I have an idea of where I want to go and I'll probably do a test set, maybe the first, uh, six or eight figures and just see in my first run, if it's working, usually I can, I can kind of get close enough to my vision that I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to stick with that. But every once in a while, one time I did try to do, I was like, you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to do grim dark and I'm going to do it on my Yom's Vikings. And I started with the warlord figure and God, I don't know what went wrong when it was done. It was just a dark, muddy mess. And I was like, that's it. I never strip and restart. I just have a rule. Always go forward. Like just uh -huh. keep painting. And I was so unhappy with my grim dark, um, that I stripped and restarted and went bright. <laughs> I came up with a bright <laughs> shield maiden warband. So the yeah, the, the idea kind of that was one time when something failed and that's okay. And I I grabbed another approach. Okay. That sounds good. How do you approach the color scheme for kind of the historical dark ages where not every dude is going to have the same uniform. You know, you know, some you can choose a faction, maybe like Romans or something, right. where where that is the case. The yes. uniforms and, and shields. So, what's 
your kind of general approach, you know, do you do a similar thing kind of every time or you know, what are some methods or thoughts you know, right. towards choosing colors and variations on the models to represent just the dudes showing up, you know, in their right. clothes and armor from home? It, that's a superb question, Raj. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to just own it right out of the gate. To me, the very most important thing when I walk out to an event is that I create something that's pleasing to my eye, something that makes mm -hmm. me happy. And so that's a pretty big universe. And that universe lets me kind of cheat away from historicals. So I'm going to just say it. I'm going to own it. My historicals tend to be um, bright and um, eye catching. If I painted, like, for example, um, I painted Anglo-Saxon Levy Horde. Now, I did take it down. I did mute my palette a little bit. But mm -hmm. if I made them, like, realistic, like, historically realistic, it would probably look like it could be kind of a muddy, boring visual mess, right? And that would be historical. Mm -hmm. Like, you could literally get a sponge and put mud on everyone's pants and <laughs> yeah, just mud yeah, up yeah. all the shields. They all get wooden shields. That would be realistic. But it wouldn't be a lot maybe to look at. So I do sacrifice realism. And I know people, like, there are people who don't like what I do. And that's okay, right? Because if, um, if I did it really, really realistically, like, even just think about your basing. Think about all the basing you've ever looked at. The earth from 6, 10, 20 feet up does not look anything like our basing. We cheat our basing <laughs> to create a nice yeah. palette to put the figure on. And since we cheated there, I just cheat my way up. The shields are probably a cheat. The brightness of the clothes are cheat. Having said that, though, I do like... I, I There was a time when I was using... Um, early on in, in Saga, I was probably using my fantasy paints, which is okay. But uh, nowadays, I have, like, I have brought it down from my... From what i used to do and uh probably i keep an eye on historical like i don't try to put my levy in purples but i also don't sweat it too much and evil a difference okay yeah good thoughts so for me so i'll jump back to two questions ago about techniques and methods and stuff so i'm always trying to do something a little different on each war band for good or for for ill you know sometimes it's time consuming and never want to do it again <laughs> sometimes uh you know you know i like it but i'm always trying to do a, a couple different things so like with the muslims i used uh oil wash on those guys so i hadn't done that on any other historical models really on the heathens i did the under the nadiral shading with the airbrush that was kind of their main scheme with the Chaos Dwarves, I used the airbrush, Nadiral shading, combined with speed paints for the first time. And then on the um, Carthaginian forces, I did the kind of just, just speed paints, using them a different way, you know, using them as speed paints in some instances and as washes and, and other instances. So usually there's some kind of method that I'm trying out and... You know, maybe I would like to settle on something, <laughs> you know, kind of have like, all right, this is the Raj way of doing it. And I'm done experimenting and I'm going to do everything this way from here on out because it's the best mix of efficiency and results for for me. You know, I guess um, I'm kind of drilling in on that. Maybe I do like using the airbrush and the nadiral shading. So that's what I use on the Irish. I use sort of some different paints for that, that I really, really like the result. Um, for color selection and stuff like that, I guess I'm kind of trending towards brighter and brighter. Um, you're, you're doing that or I've kind of reached peak brightness with the Irish though i can't imagine going any brighter than than that so maybe that'll be the baseline or um that one's really kind of a warm color scheme so i might switch to a cold color scheme or usually you know kind of warm and cold is, is usually the best bang for your buck so we'll see where where i go from here on the variation on the clothes so i do like to kind of vary it up you know you see that on the heathens and on the the muslims there's some differences there so with the muslims you know i picked a main color or, or two main colors black and white for example and then their rags or cloths and scarves and shields and stuff pull from a pool 
of like a pastel blue, pink, green, orange, yellow, I can't remember. So there's four colors there. So there's variation, but it's not like I've got every paint pot out on my desk and I'm trying to do every color you know, for a realistic representation. So um, that's a way you can vary it and, and keep the madness with the heathens. So there's some kind of main colors. So for the main clothes, there's blue, red and green primarily and then some a lot of them have white and maybe gray or tan for pants or like a secondary color um, all the shields are red black or white and then on the shields i will add some yellow use yellow for high accents but you won't see gr uh, orange on any of them um, Purple is just reserved for my warlord. Typically, I'll, I'll work it in on the warlord somewhere. So there's a lot of variation there. You know, there's some light blues, some pinks, some light greens, dark greens. Um, so, and when I do that, I'll usually try to do a similar shade or highlight process to tie them all together. So instead of having a, you know, I've got a blue and then a lighter blue and another lighter blue bottle and then instead of having a green and a different color green and another green for highlights i'll just use the their base color and then they'll mix in like a light um i use like this light cream skin skin color and i'll mix it in so they're all getting the same kind of highlight color so the red is being highlighted with mixed in that cream color and the green is being highlighted with that mixed in cream color and the blue is being highlighted so they're all in the same wavelength in in some way you know what i mean and yep. then um for the shades too you know they're all getting the nadural shading from the airbrush or they're all getting the oil wash you know so the crevices are all the same and then the highlights are kind of all in the same wavelength so that's kind of what i do to kind of constrain the madness but have some variation the colors um I, that makes sense money oh it makes sense and and thank you for bringing that up because this is such a wide field to cover um i will 100 percent agree many many years ago um i went down the you know i did a gallic army and i tried to do each figure completely different <laughs> uh, you've heard the story i mean it was a long time ago in 15 millimeter my son walked in and he called it a clown army because it was too varied and there was no theme and there was no unifying so um i learned my lesson and like my mutts like you just described my unifying theme is all the shields are done in black and white with some grays. And then we have many colors for the cloaks, but then they all have like three main colors for uh, the veils and the capes so that you create like a little something to pull it together. So it's not a clown army so that there's yeah. some visually, uh, even if it's subtle, some unifying, um, some method to pull them all together. Yeah. Yeah. Some, that's some a, that's cohesiveness. And yes. so, um, yeah, and I think that's one of the great things about Saga. We're dealing with time periods far back enough that there's um, some wiggle room. And then also the scale of what we are playing, you know, it's 40, 40 guys, you know, 40 or 50. You know, the biggest is 70. And that's still enough that you could definitely, no matter what you're playing, you could have one guy outfitting like 40 dudes. Yes with his personal yep. he paid for all the shields he paid for all the hey you guys all get this tunic you know if you're thinking of vikings or what it's not impossible that that would be the case Agreed. So, um you know i think the the period kind of inspires some variation with a lot of troops but you can definitely just pick two or three colors go to town on everybody and you know this is warlord X and X. Mm -hmm. He's a rich guy. He's outfitted. This is his personal retinue bodyguard or whatever. Is this 40 guys like that? It's definitely possible. Yeah, it's not not impossible. Um, definitely could be probable depending on what uh, faction you're playing. So 100 yeah, percent. We've got to just remind ourselves we're playing a game and we spend a lot of time painting the model. So they got to look good to us. And Having a cohesive force, Marty. If you're gonna paint up for a tournament or something, that can, that can help too. If if 
want to get some votes. Yep. Um, for basing, Monty, you touched on it a little bit. Do you vary this up? Do you just do the same thing every time, or um, what do you? So I have changed a little bit. I had a pretty labor-intensive basing system. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about this one, and uh, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it wrong. Is it gamers geek? Uh, there's someone who does geek gaming. Geek Phoenix. gaming. Thank yeah. you. That's it. And so I could, and I have dabbled because I have different um, basing schemes and scatter from that company. But here's here's the thing that I've learned. Like you just talked about it, like portability. Like a warband can be portable. Sometimes the troops could be portable. So these lads can run as Carthaginian. They can run as Iberians. Maybe they could be a Merc. And if I keep redoing my basing in unique methods, then then the warband is kind of stuck together. I can't mix, you know, the woodlands with the desert basing. I mean, you can, yes. but they don't look quite right. So I've kind of been going for like one style um, spammed, certainly for when I'm painting in an age, so that I can port units or or whole war bands and blend things together and get more usability out of it. And also that, um, that scatter, that uh, gaming geek stuff is dead easy and a big time saver and the results are pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Um, I use that on the Carthaginians. Loved it so, so much. And I kind of gave you the recipe for my heathens. Yep. <laughs> and it was like a 12-step process. When I was putting it out, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a bit much. I don't know if Monty's going to want to do this, but uh, if he wants them to match, he's going to... Do you put down the rocks, glue the rocks. The rocks are painted this color. They get a wash. The dry bush, the dirt. You got to glue these things on. Little fuzzies. Glue on some static grass. You want to dry brush the static grass? Glue on some uh, other stuff. Yeah, it's like, that's just kind of how you did it back. Nope. Yeah, if you grew up in Warhammer, 90s, nope. 2000, yeah, that was the method. But that Geek Gaming Scenic stuff is great. And then with the Irish, I had... I bought a couple extra packs, either more pack or Badlands pack or some, something like that. Or I'm like, yeah, I'll use these with the Irish. Um, but when I got them, my Irish are painted so bright and fantastical. And those, those mixes were just kind of gray rocks for the most part. I'm like, this doesn't even, I can't, yeah, it doesn't really jive. Mm. And then I was thinking, I'm like, Ugh, what am I going to do here? You know, I got to get these done for Akon. And I'm like, well... I went in a bin I, from making terrain and everything. I've got all the junk that is in those little those little packages. I've got all that junk just separately. So I just made from scratch. You know, I added some some premixed green flock with some little clumps and little rocks and stuff. And so I just made my own geek gaming scenics stuff from the <laughs> all the terrain supplies that I had. And you know, I didn't think about it too hard, just mix it together and it worked great. And oh. I think I'm going to try to probably do something like that. And like you say, the, the downside to using different bases is kind of mixing models between armies and multi-use. And that's a downside to doing different techniques of painting too, you know, so, right. um, you know, I've got some some heathens or something, and I want to build like a goth war band, and maybe some of the models could be used. But because I use two different paint styles, for me personally, you know, that's that's no go. No bueno. Can't can't mix these guys. They, there's different paint styles. But uh, to get back to the the basing, I definitely I could see myself using this same mix because it, it looks good. I like how it looks. Um, so. Um, I'm probably going to be doing mixes from here on out, either whether it's this one or a different one that I make. Um, just so easy, no need to mess with sand like in the the olden times, in my opinion. Kind of depends what you're going for. Um, I have really liked for the the Muslims, I used the I don't know AK. It's like pumice spackle type stuff where it's gooped up, um, so that re works really well pretty quick as well so that's another option for you especially for desert type stuff makes sense um so at this point Monty, is there anything else that we could talk about because at this point you've decided on the warband you yep. purchased the models you yep. painted them 
Well, You've based them, you know. and they're basically ready to go. Um, any any other thoughts? Mm, gosh, I think that's the basics. I, there's just the hardest thing. Maybe is just that there's just so many choices. So so just um, tabletops. If you know if if you're a little overwhelmed, if you're not sure if you're going to like the warband, you're not sure if you want to commit. I guess I would just say tabletop simulator is a great place to test out a board, a build, and just make sure it matches your taste and your playing style. Um, I don't know if there's anything worse than like having an idea, painting it, and then going to play it, and then you decide, I don't really like this war band. And I mean, you know, that's that's what you've got, you know, figure it out. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, try to test it out a couple of times if you can. And yeah. even, I mean, you can do it just by, you know, these are my Norman models. Proxy. But I'm using, I'm using exactly. them as the uh, Saracens today. Yeah, that's what local, exactly. local buds are for. Um, that's right. We'll save. Last thing you should do uh, after building Warband is, this is what I do, so you might have your own method, but all the paints that I used, I put, I line them up and then I take a picture. So, and then I put that picture on a Google Drive somewhere. So if I ever need to add any more models, I know exactly which blue that I used, which wash, which whatever, and that saved my bake ad at commission for some <laughs> infinity <laughs> models. And I was, I could not match what I had done originally. I had some of the original models. And so I had to go back because I couldn't find the picture. I knew I took a picture, but I couldn't find it. So I had to go back on like two old phones that were like in my basement. I powered them up and then I found the picture on there. Wow. And I was like, oh, that's the, you know, I was painting yellow, but I'd use this orange. I'm like, oh, I used an orange. Lover. That's why it looks different. Yep. So um, definitely recommend that. You could also you just write it down. I know people do little paint notebooks and stuff, but the easiest thing for me is just taking a picture of the paints you use. And then usually that's enough to kind of grok the, the process. If you need to recreate it, you can, you know, once you need to have the paints, you can usually kind of remember the, the sequence of what you did. But um, that's a little, little bit of advice from somebody who almost got burned. But Bonnie, how many war bands do you usually build a year? Ooh, uh, Gosh, you know, that's a blur. I mean, I would say at least four. I have slowed down. Um, so I think I think four is a decent amount in a year. That's, you know, one every quarter. Maybe three three months. Yeah, right. I think that's definitely yeah. doable. Yeah. You're not cranking them out. so fast. You're burning I can't, yourself right, I can't, out. I can't play, like, you know, all the war yeah. bands. <laughs> so, yeah, you, so what am I yeah, doing? Yeah, you might, that might be, yeah. Too, too many armies because you're not going to... I painted the mutts. They've been done since... You know, I've had the models assembled since last year around September, October. They were painted in December. I played against them a bunch of times, letting people borrow them, but I still haven't used them. So right. um, you can definitely paint too fast You know, if, if you're not getting in games quick enough. So two years ago, I painted one army, Chaos Dwarves. Last year, I painted the Carthaginians and the Muslims. This year, Monty, I've already painted the Irish force. For the paint challenge, by the end of the year, it's going to be the Ed Age of Magic army. Uh, but that's meant to be a secondary challenge. So I'm looking at chivalry. I, I think this might be the year, Monty. I paint three yes. saga armies. Good. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I put myself in a good position getting the Irish done so early. Um, but my mojo is coming back, baby. Coming back strong. There you so. go. All right. Well, I think we've talked enough about that. It'd be interesting to hear people's thoughts on yeah. this. You know, do they use the same basing every time? Do they use the same color scheme? The same paint methods every time? How do they decide on a war band pure aesthetics versus you know you got you like the battle board i like to to blast my opponent <laughs> off the table so <laughs> i'm gonna pick an army based off that um so fun all right 
Moving along to the paint contest, Monty. This was a paint contest of epic proportions, yes, would, you yes. would you say? Yes, Monty? Would you say, Monty? All right, let me get set up here. All right. So this was for a large model of some kind that was pretty, pretty loose. So you could do like a multi-base warlord um, as well to, to, to meet it. So we're taking a look here. I've got the Discord up. We're going to go through these one by one, give our thoughts. We're going to pick out our favorite. So that's a nebulous criteria of some some kind there. Sometimes that can be the best painted, but if somebody put a lot of effort into the uh, other elements, we'll, we'll certainly take that into consideration. Yep. And size, Monty, bigger is better. <laughs> if somebody got some horses in here, that that always impacts things. Camels yep. are unnaturally favored. So moving on here, I think we had 11 entrants. So yep. not as many as some of the other ones, but we're just going to scroll through here and see what we can find. People are getting ready. And the first one contest began on the 5th. So 12 days later, we've got O'Shannon's. Oh, he's been doing up some amazing Greeks. Uh, Spartans using non-metallic metals. And this, this, is pre <laughs> this is pretty bonkers, Monty. Yes, it is. It's wild. Um, I love animals getting punched in the face <laughs> by humans. So this really speaks to me. Just looking at that breastplate is like mm, that skin. Um, definitely some elbow grease was laid into yes. these highlights here. Uh, any th particular thoughts on the lion, Monty? Right. The lion is just stunning. But overall, like I'm on the uh, third of his three picks, uh, the real close up. And just seeing all the very tiny brush strokes. Uh, yeah, they build up the highlights. It's tough to get pictures this close. Yeah. That still look good. I was going <laughs> to say. Just from my personal efforts, like mine are covered in dust and every little blotch thing. So this is yeah. uh, definitely amazing, amazing effort here. It is. By O'Shannon. So it's, it's Hercules doing one of his trials here, punching a lion. Something's, <laughs> something is wrong with this lion. He's got weird scales. Right. He's smart the parts. He's got the boobos. <laughs> Monty, the boobos. Right. Uh, shouldn't right. be touching him then, but yeah, he's he's giving him quite a punch. Yeah. That's good. Next up, we've got the Gossard 267. Yeah. It's a bear meant for the Swiss yep. in Age of Chivalry. So I saw some discussion going back and forth about... Is a bear historically accurate or not? Monty, do you, do you have any input on that? I mean, it, we know there was, was just a... We know the, the, there was, I, I believe, a Polish unit in World War II that adopted a bear. Um, so I'm going to say if a bear was used in the front lines or near the front in World War II, like, why wouldn't they do it if they could in, uh, you know, the age of chivalry? Yeah, I mean, there had to have been attempts throughout history to militarize the bears, Monty. <laughs> right. That's thick. But uh, the bears are, are wild. Yeah. Yeah. This looks fun. Yes, nice it does. little teaser for Age of Chivalry with uh, the colors there. Looks really cool. Good looking bear. This model. Um, not sure where it comes from, but it's a good looking bear. Yeah. I, I think uh, top tier for painting for uh, Age of Chivalry when we don't even have the book. That's uh, That's awesome. It's on a matching hill of some kind as well. Oh, maybe the display oh, board. Oh yeah! Wow, I see it now. Nice. We didn't even did we didn't even touch the display board in our <laughs> army discussion. Oh, that's right. I don't. I don't like to do it. But. Oh. All right, moving on. Martin, previous winner, maybe a multiple winner. Yep. Think I know so. he's doing some eagles yeah. for his high elves. Yeah. Um, kind of nostalgic trip. He's got old high elf models he's working on. And yeah, these are these are good looking looking high high elves. Kind of remind me of the the old Warhammer book models. <laughs> this is kind of what they what they look like. Um, it's tough to do realistic 
feathers with the different colors. I think he he did a good job here, yes. though. Yes, with he the did. The black, the white, the brown, and looks looks good. Very nice, very nice. Got the basing, subtle highlights on the feathers. Uh, nice, nice beak work. Up kept his paint strokes off the clear line stand. <laughs> Not always Kudos. easy to do. I really, really hope it's durable for you, buddy. <laughs> I've never, never had good luck with those, oh. and those dudes always breaking offs at the belly. Um, so. Now hopefully it's resilient for you. These are Grenadier models. So oh. they, they might be the original ones Ooh. being recast, resold years later. Alderman Andrews built up the, the Manu Ballista. So yeah. this thing looks awesome. Yeah. Like the extra little uh, tank trap there. The Gothic, <laughs> right? Gothic Panzers coming in, gonna get stuck. That's pretty um, good. That's cool. Yeah, that yeah. looks really good. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's okay. All approaches are okay. But, like, if you're like, oh, whew, I really have to crank this out, you know, a person doing the bare minimum wouldn't be doing a whole, like, this is a little display, a little vignette all by itself. It's got so. the extra pieces. Yes, yeah, it looks really that's cool. it. That's it. And I believe he mentions there's scratch builds. The Imperial Roman Manu Ballista took the late Roman unarmored bodies to make the crew. Okay. And added some flair out of the Draco windsock. Yep. So they can <laughs> see where it goes. Looks good. Right. With the background here. So, yeah, very nicely done. Yeah. Everything's great about this. And to let me know, DJ, did you paint them separately and then glue them to the base? Oh. Or glue them to the base and then paint them and have to hold it at like weird angles to get the the strokes in that's that's what i hate about these big models right. is having to paint things separate and then glue them together right it's always been my beef so all right yeah looking looking great though here we go monty wild dog mm. we got the spider this thing looks awesome yeah it's huge left the crew off it's supposed to be covered with goblins and, <laughs> and stuff okay. but this looks way better yeah just having the spider on its own um this thing is yeah yeah amazing eyeballs oh I very love well the done nice and glossy love those. properly highlighted and in the patreon channel he mentioned how he did the yellow it was like a sequence of like eight or nine or ten different paints oh no from, from the brown all the way up to the yellow yeah. so so in um, short, I will never be doing that. So so tip of the hat. No, I was I was really wondering. I'm now gonna have to go back and find that one. But yeah, the the uh, gradient going from darkest to brightest really shines. Yeah, it, it it's really well done. So once you get to the yellow parts, the yellows kind of naturally you, know, you can paint them over each other and create a beautiful gradient. It's the kind of the browns that yeah. are tougher here. So yeah. Um, and kind of how much, you know, so it's darker on the claws versus, you know, like the top of the shell, you know, he's he stuck to the lighter browns. So there's a lot of judgment that goes mm -hmm. in when you're doing these manual brushes. And yeah, very, very well, well done. And I uh, like how he ties in the basing with the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very nice. Very nice. We've got C. Sabismus. Yep. And he's got the, <laughs> the ogre <laughs> with the giant spoon. <laughs> whooping ass. I'd be pretty scared if this dude showed up in my backyard pointing his finger at me. Also, uh, I think he might be pulling double duty. Um, I think it's a UK tradition. If you get last place at an event, you get the wooden spoon. And I feel ooh, like the ogre's God. offering the wooden spoon. He's yeah. pointing out who's going to get it. Off, so. Yeah, just definitely showcases the speed paints, contrast paints, so you can get a good result. Looks like clothes and stuff are fairly basic, but nice and bright, mm -hmm. and love the purple hat. Well done. Looking good. Nice. All right, here's what I thought we would get, would be a bunch of elephants. So right. the elephants have finally arrived, Monty, fool in a hat. Yep. So no kit bashing on this one, he says. Looks like... Uh, Carthaginian elephant. Let's yep. take a look. So. Is this the Victra? It must be the Victra. Yeah, yeah, right. 
Carthage or Numidian, but probably, yeah, yeah, you're right. Got it. I see it now. Um, in the service of Carthage, yes. Looks good. Yep. That box isn't big up there, Monty. Be, there's a lot of rub in there. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> Yes. be comfortable with whoever you're up there with. Uh, <laughs> right oh, yeah the free hand looks good on the the blanket yes. and the shields and the box and you don't need to get the expensive uh little big boy right. victorian or uh uh, little transfers, right? Little big yeah, man, little, little baby big boy. No, we it's, call him it, baby big boy. It, it is here. expensive. It's kind of a joke. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, a a Wasa joke, apparently. It's a Wasa local. Yeah. yeah. But they they are a little spendy. So yeah, it's nice to like. It's always a challenge, but it's always nice to see the the hand painted. Yeah, looks well good. Done. Base, I think basing is nice as well. Yep. Key is always a variety on those big bases yeah. uh, to make them look good. So Nelly, the title, Nelly the Ellie <laughs> is the name of the, the photograph I see. Oh, well done. All right. We have a giant eagle. Knack Nadge. Nice. This thing looks cool. So <clears throat> second eagle yeah. so far. From Blue Giant Studios as a resin model. Let's okay. take a look at this bad boy. So this one's coming in. Landed on the log. Looks good. Yeah. The eyeball looks cool. Yeah, looks very Going good. There. Good scale. This big model. Like the gets brighter on the tips there, a little bit whiter, and you can kind of see see this is like yeah, though you can see the tips of the feathers in the third one like how realistic feathers like how difficult that is right. to to paint and like make it look good you know from like two feet away you know it's, it's, it's basically camouflage you know so there's always painting camouflage is, is I don't know, <laughs> I'm not, i've never been able to do it myself you know because you're do, do you highlight it or not you know usually you don't highlight it and so it can look kind of flat but um yeah Looks looks very right. very nice. A lot a lot of work and top tier basing to boot. Okay, it's gonna look at the next one here. We got another juicy elephant. Ah, sagas of history. Nice. This one, another Victrix. These guys. See, this is how I would do it. I I go butt to butt in this one if i was in the how to with you monte <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't go front to back Ooh. i would just be more comfortable that way i see you know if one of us is a lefty that might help i don't know we'll figure it out when the uh, time comes yeah so like the freehand yeah. on the shield look okay, he's matching the warlord there yeah. so this is the warlord's personal elephant so looks good nice and part of the overall force Looking good back there. Like the backdrop. Looks awesome. I gotta get a City of Carthage backdrop for, for boys. But Agree. Very nice. Clean. Um is this the last one. We got a couple more to go here. We got some dragons. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So these look like Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire models. Oh, okay. That, that's my guess. They come in the red like this, and then they have that additional square facing um, that you pop the, the circle onto. So I think these are cool. Okay. I really like the, the green one. Yeah, pink yeah. really stands out. I really like that it's contrast. Very nice. That one, he, he's fine too, but yeah. that green one is a real, a real hit. Excellent. Yeah, all the that Song of Ice and Fire models, those are those are pretty much all good across the board, in in my opinion. I think they hit the mark for me better than Warhammer stuff. So if you're looking for fantasy stuff, definitely check that out. Now <laughs> Age of Magic Aberration model, Ooh. Neo Atiu by Otherworld Miniatures. So I believe something like this is in the Age of Magic book. Isn't it Monty? Do you, does he look familiar? Gosh, he does look familiar. This creature. Yeah. I think yeah, he's in um something about it just makes me smile <laughs> i don't know the teeth and the mouth look really awesome yes they do this one so 
gums, the eyes on the stock. Yeah, this is nightmare fuel right here. Yeah, I really hate that. That tentacles look good. Yep. And tentacles like that really freak me out. Yeah. There's that movie, The Mist. Bonnie, have you seen that? I feel like I Where have. Some dude, he gets grabbed by a tentacle like this, and it basically like explodes like his body wherever it touches. You know, they do, the kind of cuts and grinds and uh, presses all to like explode a chunk of the dude's body off or Oof. something like that. So I don't know. I think that's what I'm remembering, but um, yeah, that's, that's a good movie. So nice work, Galatkin. Right. And those teeth, he has not been to the dentist. You can see the nice gradient shading from the plaque buildup <laughs> and the gum uh, periodontal uh, disease. But finally, yeah. we've got one more Victrix elephant. Looks like it's the people's elephant of choice. And we got two elephants. So went to town. Yeah. The removable oh, added nice. the magnet. Oh, so wow. love to see that. Nicely done. Oh, that's clever. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, using for Carthage and Numidians. Epirus, Ptolemaic successors. Wow. With the different decals of the high yeah. Persians would be the last. Look so, at that. Yeah, I love it. That's Sneaking top out. tier. Yeah. But the, yeah, I guess those decals, yeah. They look pretty friggin' awesome, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. <laughs> On here, yeah. yeah. Um, so they do look cool if you don't want to do the freehand. And these guys look awesome. Nicely done having the different swap outs. That gets an extra few points in my book. Yeah, very clever. You got the different crewmen here ready to go. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Let's see what we want to do here. Monty, top two or three for you. What are you thinking here? Dude, this is always so hard. Um, shout out to everyone willing to post and share their work because it's always like um, if you play, you win. So good job. Um, I, I have to like a couple things just like kind of like the um, the orange to yellow on the giant spider kind of blows my mm -hmm. mind. And then yeah. you you telling me like I was looking, I'm like, I can tell this is a lot of work. And then when you said it, I'm like, yeah, that's a shit ton of work. So well done. Um, there, I, I would pick that one. Gosh, this is hard. I uh, <laughs> the um, Hercules with the lion. Oh my gosh, um, I'd have to put that one in there. And my gosh, it's so hard to to narrow it down to just get one more. I guess the one that really kind of grabbed me was um, the um, Manubalista uh, kind of like display. Yep. You know, the whole it's a story. It's it's a piece. But by itself, too, you could just put this on your counter and it would be clearly it would be a story. So nicely done there. Yeah, I agree. I think your top three matches my top three as well. Um, putting them in order to come up with the favorite was a, a challenge for us. But eventually, I think it came down to O'Shannon and the... A spider of uh, the wild dog, but in the end, I think we were both wowed by O'Shannon's work. So we're gonna go with O'Shannon for our favorite for this one. So wild dog, there's a lot of effort that went into that spider, but I can tell you know a lot of effort went into the skin and armor of our hero here. Plus, what put it over the top for me was the model itself. A uh, human punching an animal <laughs> in the face is always going to to win out for me, Monty. So if there was a wild dog, if you had maybe <laughs> gone in with a goblin or human punching the spider in the face, uh, trying to give it a knuckle sandwich, that might have put it over the top for me. But uh, that is what we decided. We do have a random winner here, and Nick Knack Nosh was missing from the list for some reason. Hmm. Put him on here. Number 12. So we have 12 entries in the end. Okay, nice. And go to random out. Great. Number nine is uh, P. Flaneur. So, P. Flaneur, you are a random winner nice. for Gripping Beast, $25 gift certificate. So, 
He was a first time poster. Wow. Newbie luck here. Yeah. So you're gonna win a $25 gift certificate from Gripping Beast. They are our sponsor for the contest. So thanks to Andy and the guys over there. We're gonna catch up with them shortly. Um, maybe right now, depending on how I sequenced my photos of everything. So that's the paint contest, but we have a few more giveaways and things we need to do to catch up with our sponsors. So let me turn the window off now. We'll bring the pick folder up. And yes, we are gonna jump right into Gripping Bees. So Gripping Bees, they got a spring sale going on, Monty. 15% off almost everything. Nice. They are running the official UK Grand Melee once again. You can buy tickets on the, the site. I think it links you to BritCon. Um, so I think it's first week of August for the Saga official UK Grand Melee. And they also have their Sword Point Rise of Rome book out, Monty. So I don't know. Have you ever checked out Sword Point? Uh, I have not, uh, but I'm, I would like to check it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They've got the, the Rise of Rome supplement here. So the first or the main rule book seem to do well enough that they've got a, a supplement of some kind going here so really cool to see so gripping beast not only is given 25 pound gift certificate to our paint contest winner they're going to give it to a lucky uh essentially a patreon winner anybody at the lifeguard and up tier will be eligible for this so there's going to be a, a mother load of goodies for one person and then, but all the lifeguards and whirlers will get a, a little something, but we'll go through what those are right now. So besides gripping beasts, we got Medbury miniatures. So he's got some alternate mounted Carolingian hearth guard. So Carolingian hearth guard are seem to get a lot of play mm -hmm. for compared to some more bands and their hearth guard. I don't know what it is just being mounted. Monty, why, why did the Carolingian hearth guard get taken? Uh, so that should be because of their double, triple move with a shoot uh, in okay. there. Javelin that makes shoot. sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So those are going to be going to the winner of the mother load. And in that release, he's got Charlemagne as well. This model. Mm, mm, body. So good. So good. And he's got Roland as well in that historical wow. release. So Okay. Um, he's got medals for a lot of these. He's slowly working these over to his, his metal range. So I think the units are being kind of worked at one at a time. And I saw somebody mention something on the forum and he, he's like, um, yeah, they're not metal yet, but I'll, that'll be the next one I do since, since you mentioned it. So Monty, he's going to get you on Medbury here. He knows I'm you're in. not going to get the resin <laughs> prints, but you're going to, you'll, right. you'll do the metal. So he's going to get will. you that way. Um, so check him out. He's got a few different ranges. Our friends at Reconquer Designs. So he did the Andalusian infantry before. The latest is the Berber infantry. So they are slightly different, but I'm actually pretty excited for these because you can mix them in with the Andalusian infantry for some more variety. So I think I do want another point or two of warriors on foot. So I'm looking at these guys. These are the units that will be given away in the mother load. And other releases this month. He's got a whole freaking camp with a stockade going on. So if you need a display board option, here it is, Monty. You can get the whole thing. Uh, an entire stockade with tents and campfires and a little junk. And then you've got the group of dudes chatting around the campfire. So uh, Marcus Reconquer, he's always doing kind of citizens and civilians and natural poses, which I think is really cool. Yeah. So nice. check him out. Uh, we've got Black Knight Miniatures. So he is starting to fill out his Eastern line. So he's got Teutonic Knights mainly some Eastern princes and Polish stuff he's working on. So the giveaway in the mother load is going to be these mounted uh, sergeants for Teutonic Knights. So kind of warriors on horseback. And he's starting to do command models for all his groups as well. So adding even more variety. So check out Black Knight miniatures. And 
We've got War Games Atlantic. So this one went under the radar, Monty, but the unit that will be in the Motherload giveaway is Viking Armored Infantry. We've got more Ooh. Vikings. So I think depending on popularity too, there's the potential to turn these into plastic kits. So um, we've got some really old Viking plastics. So it'd be interesting to see these guys get made into plastic. But right now they're just digital. So if you win the mother load, you're gonna get some of these Viking infantry dudes. So they look pretty awesome here. Um, they also, Monty, Sea War Games Atlantic, the Age of Chivalry. Foot Knights came yeah. out, though these are plastics. Yeah. Did you see those? Um, I believe I did, and I do need some Foot Knights. Yeah, so it's a little ironic for Saga because these are actually more applicable for Age of Crusades than the Age of Chivalry. Um, you know, chivalry is kind of 100 years of war, the full, full plate stuff, but yeah, you do you. So this is the first of a set of uh, two, three, or four Different ones coming. I think they're coming with sergeants mounted. I think there'll be sergeants on foot, mounted sergeants, and then knights mounted, if I remember correctly. Um, which I may or may not have remembered correctly, but uh, check that out. And I think this is our last one we're taking a look at, but Scrofa Miniatures is our sponsor as well. He's hard at work on his biblical range and the Assyrians. Monty, he's, his skills are increasing because these, these Assyrians look pretty awesome. Okay. Um, I know somebody is doing a Bronze Age fan supplement. Somebody posted that on the Discord, yep. but these are awesome looking. And the Assyrian heavy chariot, you know, it's really distinctive with the beards and the helmets. But the mother load uh, entry is going to be the Indian chariots, the light chariots. And actually, everybody at the lifeguard and the warlord level are going to get this chariot STL file. So um, everybody, those levels of the Patreon, as a thank you, will receive that. So thank nice. you to everybody. And I think we'll pop over and do that drawing thing. STL giveaway, so we're up to 23. So this is for being a patron January through March, number six. And that is Britt. Britt nice. uh, from Kansas City. Yep. So he's going to win the mother load of all those STL files, the Gripping Beast gift certificate. And he also will get the light chariots like everybody else. Unfortunately, I know he's already got a bunch of Indian light chariots, <laughs> so uh, they're not going to serve him probably that well, but I think the rest of the group could probably use them. Um, there's another Patreon giveaway. This is the last one, I swear, Monty, and that is everybody at Hearth Garden Up are entered every quarter to win some figures painted by yours truly, and by that I mean me. And it can be a unit. I'm thinking maybe some heroes. I've got some stuff in this, this stash ready to give away. I can work with somebody to do some custom stuff. I've got some stuff on the painting desk that I'm willing to, to give away. So uh, it's going to be one of these lucky people. Let's do it. Generate. Number 22 is... Sam, Sam Y. So I know that's Sam Yoder. So he's going to win some painted figures from me. Nice. So congratulations. So if you are one of these winners, please reach out to me uh, to expedite the process along. Remembering things is uh, tricky in the best of times. Is it not, Monty? 100%. Okay. So. Uh, if you haven't yet, get on over to the Saga Thor's Day Discord. We're up to 1,139 members. Nice. You can check out the paint contest entries. I've mentioned there's some chat about the Crusades fact in there, speculations. You can check out the biblical fan supplement. Somebody posted a link to that. There's a lot to do on there. You can check out the player finder. We're up to 275 pins. We need to get to 500 pins by November. So just about... Less than six months to go, but uh, technically we're over halfway on the pins. So hopefully we can get to 500 by November and keep it going. 
and you can check that out on the Discord. Uh, want to talk about the Patreon one last time? Not only do you get all the uh, giveaway stuff, but the last two videos have been about Age of Magic. So these are the Patreon only videos. If you're a warrior and up, you get an extra video each month. And the last two ones have been discussions about Age of Magic and how you could be involved in the new Age of Magic book. And if that's interesting to you, head on over. I really appreciate the support from everybody. Uh, coming up here, the next two episodes this month, we'll be talking with the Adepticon winners for the team tournament, the Duns. And the Age of Vikings and Invasions, which is Shea Dunn. Shea, Shea Dunn. Um, so double double header there, yeah. <laughs> talking with Shea and his father. And it's, it's a tremendous feat to, to do that. So it is. Give a congratulations to those guys preemptively. But if you want to hear how they're able to pull it off, check back next week. I want to thank all those patrons, Patrick, Sean, Mitchell, Scott, Frank, Britt, and DJ, and the rest of the Saga Thursday patrons. I really, really appreciate you guys providing that support and wouldn't be doing all these videos without you. And lastly, comment below about your army building thoughts. Why do you pick a war band? How do you select the models? How do you select the paint scheme and basing materials? Do you do a uniform approach or do you, do you mix it up? Do you go crazy with the colors? Let us know your thoughts. Um, that's going to be it. Monty, this was a pretty juicy episode yeah, here, was it not? a lot of content. Almost could make two shows out of it. Uh, <laughs> don't give me ideas, Monty. I used to split them up. You remember that? I do. Part one, part two. Yep. Just, a, just a stretch, squeeze yep. it out. But yep. um, we'll keep it for one this time, but that's, that's a good idea. Planting that seed there, Monty. <laughs> so, all right, folks, that's going to be it. Catch you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Saga! If you'd like to see more Saga content, consider joining the Heathen Army over on Patreon or popping on down to the Saga Thursday Discord server. Links below. Thanks, guys.